Lasik made a name for herself before she was invited to speak on opening night of the Republican National Convention. She's running for the late Elijah Cummings congressional seat, and in her campaign ad, she claims she has a lot of work to do. Watch. I'm Kim Klasik. This is Baltimore, the real Baltimore. This is the reality for black people every single day. Crumbling infrastructure, abandoned homes, poverty, and crime. The worst place for a black person to live in America is a Democrat-controlled city. It's 2020. Name a blue city where black people's lives have gotten better. Try. I'll wait. I'm Kim Klasik, and I'm running for Congress because I actually care about black lives. All black lives matter. Our communities matter. Baltimore matters. And black people don't have to vote Democrat. Please welcome Kim Klasik. Megan, you have the first question for Kim. Kim, I'm so happy to see you here. I was actually the person that wanted you to come on, and I saw your campaign ad. It's been viewed over 12 million times and even caught the eye of President Trump, who retweeted it, and later endorsed you. Um, you're getting a lot of traction, a lot of buzz, rising star. What is it about your candidacy that you think is making so many waves and getting so much attention? Uh, well, I think a lot of people can resonate with the fact that I'm just basically telling the truth. You know, we have issues in many major cities across the country. And in Baltimore City, we have over 17,000 vacant homes. We don't have career opportunities. Uh, we have a poor education system. And we have a lot of crime and violence that you can actually relate uh, back to the blight. So we have issues that we need to fix. Uh, I, I look at members of Congress, and I watch them take a vacation while everyone was dealing with the pandemic and loss of businesses, you know, being laid off and they're taking a vacation, still getting a check and, and allowed that second stimulus bill to just sit on their desk. So I wanted to run for Congress and, and basically give people a chance to have real representation. Kim, you have a big tide to turn because Baltimore is a city where Democrats have been in charge for 53 years and as recently as April, you lost a special election to fill Elijah Cummings' seat, which he held mm -hmm. for 24 years. So why should people vote for you? Give us your best sales pitch. Why you? Why now? Well, I, I do want to point out, you know, the seat did not belong to Congressman Cummings. It belongs to the residents of Maryland's District 7. Um, but I want to represent people in, in all parts of the district. You know, when the video came out, people were saying, well, why are you picking the bad parts of the district? You know, it's not picking the bad parts. You know, if I'm going to represent this district, I need to represent everyone equally. Um, obviously, there are disparities. Uh, we know that President Trump sent $15.7 billion to Baltimore City in 2018. And we don't know where that money has gone. You know, 17,000 vacant homes, if you even rehab those at 150 a pop, you would have rehabbed over 104,000 homes already. So that money is missing, and we need somebody in there to not only find it, but implement it to where it's supposed to go. And, and so I want to be that person. Well, I lived in Baltimore City, and I know that's a city that you've never lived in, even though you're, you're running to represent uh, the district in, in Maryland. But uh, Sarah mentioned Elijah Cummings. What do you think is his greatest accomplishment, and how would you build on his legacy? Um, well, I've been working in Baltimore City, just so you know, for the past eight years with my nonprofit, getting women employed. We've employed over 200 women. 30 percent went on to be financially independent. And I have a lot of love for Baltimore City, so I will continue that work. Um, but as far as Congressman Cummings, I'm pretty sure he did a lot for the city and, and for the residents. But for the past 20 years, you see it deteriorate, you know. And so I know he was very sick there in the end. Um, you know, we got to get somebody in there that is just ready to roll up their sleeves and get the work done. So I I would never uh, speak badly about Congressman Cummings. Uh, you can see on the internet, I have pictures with him. Um, but at the same time, you know, we got to get the work done. Uh, you know, Kim, uh, you mentioned just a minute ago that uh, where did the money go? <clears throat> My understanding is that the Democrats passed a second stimulus bill, but Republicans blocked it. How do you answer that? Did they block it, or did they want a certain amount of money and, and things going towards, uh, you know, basically the people in America? You know, there was a lot of other issues written in the stimulus bill, and, and really the stimulus bill should be those that were affected by the coronavirus pandemic, no? Well, yes, but they blocked yeah. the bill. Be, well, we Maybe wanted they to make should sure... get with the program and realize in your party that people are needing the money right now and get off their high horse. Just I think saying. Saw... So here's my question. At an ABC town hall this week, a black pastor confronted Trump about his campaign slogan, Make America Great Again, asking him, when has America ever been great for the black community in America? How would you answer that question? 
Yeah, so this is the greatest country in the world. That's why we have so many people coming to this country. We have uh, immigrants, you know, entering the country illegally just to get here because this is a land of opportunity. You know, we have the education. Uh, there are career opportunities in other areas, maybe just not in Baltimore City. Um, but this is a great country, and it has been for a very long time. Well, I wonder then if it's such a great country and has been for such a long time, why we need to make it great again. I agree with you. It's a great country and it's already great. It doesn't need to be made great again. But I have a, a question for you. I'm wondering if um, either from before his time as president or now as president, whether it was the calling of the death penalty for the Central Park Five, now the exonerated five, or the lawsuit by HUD against the Trump Organization in the 70s for housing discrimination, or the many things he has said and done as president. Is there anything that you take issue with or that you find racist in what Trump has done in his life um, before or after the presidency? Uh, no, mm. I don't. I, I find mm. that President Trump has shown nothing but, you know, the, the opposite of racism. You know, each year, HBCUs had to go to Congress to ask for money. You know who made that permanent so they don't have to ask each year? That would be President Trump. You know who tackled prison, prison reform and criminal justice? The first step back, that would be President Trump. You know who's investing $75 billion into opportunity zones in cities that were neglected by Democrats? That would be President Trump. So I would say, and I know Sonny has said this before when Alexandria Casey Cortez was on the show, you know, let's look at policy over personality. Um, and, and from what I could tell, the president's been doing a great job, especially for the black community. The exonerated five oh, might disagree okay. with you. I'm sorry. Okay, then. So the we're exonerated have five Ken, Ken Ken might Cla disagree with you. And then they, they would, I mean, we can we'll all have more agree with Ken Classic when we come back. Hang on, ladies. Hang on. We'll be back. You have no